Hi, Dustin Klein with Smart Business. I'm here with Mary Ellen Sheets, founder of Two Men in a Truck. Mary Ellen, thank you for joining me today. Oh, you're welcome. Excellent. I want to talk to you a little bit about two areas today, uh, ongoing education and giving back to the community, two areas I've seen that you do quite a bit of within your own organization, within the community where you founded the company. Talk a little bit about how organizations can create an internal program that's focused on internal education and ongoing education. Okay. Well, we started um, many years ago in the early 80s, and I was the only person there. So our education consisted of having franchisees come to my house, and I would sit on the couch and read my manuals to them <laughs> for a week. Um, so it was pretty boring. But we have gone b way beyond that. And um, now in our office, we have online training. We, have, we go out into the, well, we're all over the United States, and Canada and some in Europe. So we go all over and train the people. Um, one of the, the interesting things we do, we're two men in a truck, so we drive trucks. We do a lot of computer training, uh, training people how to manage people, all those things. But one of the funny things we do, we take our um, movers and all our people out to this truck training facility in Michigan mm -hmm. and you ride in these big trucks and they take a semi and they jackknife it with you in it and they also go down in a deep ditch and come back out. I mean, I did it. I was screaming the whole time. <laughs> so that's pretty intense training. Um, all of our training isn't that intense. A lot of it is just computer, very computerized, computer training. Which areas, which components should in internal ongoing training include? Soft skills, computer training, what types of things should be part of it? Well, I think it's really important that um, Probably all of your people, since we're a franchise company, we want to look as one. So it's important that we all treat our customers the same and um, have good practices in that way. Excellent. You know, when you determine what to invest in training uh, as a franchisee, or franchisor actually, um, you know, you have to figure out how you're going to support all these franchisees worldwide. Do you have a certain percentage of what you take each year and invest that into training? I don't know if we have a certain percentage. They probably do. Um, I'm not in the office day to day anymore, but I'll tell you, the more people are trained and the better they do, the more will, money will come back to us and all of us will be successful. We want our franchisees to be as successful as possible. So. When you're training those franchisees, the programs the way that they're set up, is the goal for them to go back and be able to virally train the people who work for them in the exact same way? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, not only to train their people, but we do bring some of their people in and we will maybe go out into some of the states and have a regional training where they can send people in. They send their people into our home office and it's a big deal for them, the managers, the drivers, the movers, to all come to home office. And that also shows that the franchise owners have faith in them and think, you know, respect them, that they will spend that money on training for them and that do, we will. Do you do anything else besides the training to really motivate your staff members, your franchisees, to really uh, take the message from what you created and keep that brand exactly consistent? Sure we do. Um, we have an award night, um, just like you're going to have here Saturday night, black tie and um, the long dresses and everything. And we give awards um, to the top people, and they have a lot of um, benchmarks that they have to meet to win those awards. Um, God, I just thought of something else. I know what it is. We have a rule called the grammar rule. Mm -hmm. The grammar rule means that we will all treat every customer as though it was our grandma. So I know when a mover knocks on someone's door in Kansas City or Paducah or wherever he is, he's hopefully thinking, whoever opens that door, I'm going to treat them just like my grandma. Is there a way that you're able to uh, elicit feedback to hold people accountable to make sure that's actually happening? Sure. We have to do that uh, by law. We have to measure our franchises. So we have reply cards and they started out, I mailed them and they would all come back on my desk and I would read them. They were hilarious. I mean, um, one person, I probably can't say this. <laughs> Somebody said, um, I, wish my, I wish your mover would marry my daughter. I mean, oh. they were just, made me laugh, the things that they said. 
And then it got bigger and bigger. And then, like on Monday morning, we'd have 600 cards there stacked up. And then we got a Scantron machine and started putting them through there. We've had to outsource it. We have like, I think almost at least 100,000 of those cards wow. come back. So we have a very accurate measurement of what the customer thinks about us and about our movers. What do you do with that feedback once you have it? Well, uh, we immediately return all the cards to um, the franchise owners so they can see how their people are doing. We have contests every month in our newsletters, so um, see who gets the best and who is doing the best. And we share all those numbers with all the franchisees so they each know how the other, other franchisees are doing. Excellent. Peer pressure. Now, one of the other areas that uh, you seem to be very, very committed to is corporate philanthropy and giving back to the community. What was the impetus behind that? Well, the first year when I started this business, which was just a crazy thing, uh, I made $1,000. And I was a single mom, and I had three teenage kids. And I had always been real involved in community activities, and so I decided to give that money away. So I took my $1,000, and I wrote 10 checks to local charities. It was the best feeling in the world. I felt so empowered that I could help other people. So we have always used this company to do that. And our tagline is movers who care. And that's what it means that we care about people in our communities. What are some ways that other organizations can learn from you to align their personal or corporate goals with nonprofits that fulfill similar uh, aligned missions? Well, I think Different people have different things that they care about. We had a young woman, our office manager, and she died of cancer. So cancer is a bad word in our office, so we fight it. And um, my daughter and I decided several years ago that every time we move someone, we're just gonna take 10 cents from that move and put it in a little pot for cancer, the American Cancer Society. And over the years, that is, I don't know how much it is, hundreds of thousands of dollars. A little bit, but it added up. Excellent. You know, how, how do you find ways to make the most impact? I know there's a lot of different things you do. My guess is that obviously resources become limited. So give me an example of how you find found a way to make the most impact on an organization you wanted to affect. Well, we really, uh, my children and I run the company now, and when we are asked for something, we really discuss it. And with the economy in Michigan right now, there's not much chance for foo foo donations. We really, we're looking at food banks and, and um, children, things for children, to really help the community. When things get better again, we'll have more money to do more of the fluffy things, the fun yeah. things. You know, it's been said that uh, you really embody that entrepreneurial spirit. Tell me a little bit about what you think some of the key traits to being an entrepreneur are that maybe separate them from a professional, traditional manager. Optimism. Um, I think I'm a borderline lunatic. I always see the glass as overflowing. Um, I had a lot of energy when we first started this, and I loved what I did. I loved having that business. It was like a little radio. If you did tweak this thing, something else would happen. It was just so much fun. and. Um, I've been a state employee for 20 years sitting in a cubicle, so probably anything I got out to do would have been fun, but uh, I think energy, optimism, um, you can't listen to um, negative comments, and you just have to take your idea and run with it. Excellent. Well, Mary Ellen, I appreciate your time with me today. Thank you.